The Lord be with you. We welcome you to worship on this second weekend after Pentecost. As we gather this evening, may we always find our rest and peace in Christ. We ask everyone to fill out the cards there in your pews, and after the service, you can leave those cards in the offering plates at the entrances to the church. Before we do anything else, why don't we take a moment right now and greet the folks around you. In our announcements, uh, with the retirement of Bob Auger, our Director of Christian Education, uh, we will need someone to step up and help organize uh, this summer's Vacation Bible School program if, or help and assist in some way by teaching or crafts or something. If you would be interested, please let the church office know as soon as you can. Our service today is Divine Service Setting 1, printed in your bulletin or beginning on page 151 in our hymnals. We now begin with our opening hymn, hymn number 903. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done 
and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our intro it from Psalm 62. For God alone my soul waits in silence, from him comes my salvation. For God alone, O oh my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory. My mighty rock, my refuge is God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. For God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is our true Sabbath rest. Help us to keep each day holy by receiving his word of comfort that we may find our rest in him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading for this day, which also serves as the basis for the sermon, comes from the book of Deuteronomy in chapter 5. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male servant or your female servant, or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock, or the sojourner who is within your gates, that your male servant and your female servant may rest as well as you. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson comes from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians in chapter 4. What we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ is Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we rise to sing our response. The Holy Gospel is written in the second chapter of St. Mark, beginning at the 23rd verse. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. And the Pharisees were saying to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, have you never read what David did when he was in need and was hungry, he and those who were with him? How he entered the house of God in the time of Abiathar the high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priests to eat, and also gave it to those who were with him? And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again he entered the synagogue, and a man was there with a withered hand. And they watched Jesus to see whether he would heal him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man with the withered hand, Come here. And he said to them, Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. And he looked around at them with anger, grieved at their hardness of heart, and said to the man, 
stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately held counsel with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We now confess the Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The hymn of the day is hymn 606, and you may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to open your Bibles with me to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5. In the Pew Bible, this is found on page 177. And to start, I'll read just a portion again of verse 15. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. And let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that you have called us out of the darkness of sin, unbelief, and death, and into the marvelous light of your Son, Jesus Christ. We are thankful that it's not our works that make us righteous before you, but all that Christ has done for us. Let us always in true gratitude find our rest for our souls in him and in his word. We pray this in Jesus' name. 
Amen. There was a very famous uh, newscaster and uh, commentator on the radio for decades, Paul Harvey. Probably many of you have heard him at different times. And one of his favorite segments, listened to by millions, was his The Rest of the Story segments. And it was always some vignette and had a little twist to it. And it was just fascinating with his delivery. And now, The Rest of the Story. Forget it, I'm not going to do Paul Harvey imitations anymore tonight. But the idea is intriguing, that oftentimes on the surface, we think one thing, and yet when we get beneath the surface and see it from a different perspective, it opens up a whole new avenue of thinking for us. And that's exactly what the Lord is doing here in Deuteronomy as he is rehearsing once more through Moses the commandments given to them at Sinai so many years before, now that they are about to enter the promised land. And one of those is the third commandment itself, observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And we all have on a surface kind of this idea of what's being talked about here. But the word in Hebrew for Sabbath it means rest. And God is deadly serious here that he wants his people to be able to physically find rest one time a week, imitating the pattern of God himself at the creation where six days he created and on the seventh day he rested. God did not rest because he was exhausted from creating. He rested because the creation was now complete and perfect. And so as his people would be living their lives, they would be, as God did, working for six days, and then as God did, resting on the seventh, and the rest was incredibly important because in the ancient world, there weren't labor unions, there weren't government programs, there weren't labor-saving devices so that we could find more time for recreation for our bodies and less time to actually have to put in the work back then Everybody works seven days a week, and hard days, long days, full days. And you know, if you've ever had to work several shifts, it is brutal, and it breaks down one's health, both physical and mental. And so we think on the surface, here God is giving us a command, you have to go to church or else, when really the command he gives is a gift. It is a gift given to his people of old that they were to refrain from work, and not just they, but as we saw in, uh, in verse 14, the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son, your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, and your animals. They all get time to rest. And again, this is a blessed thing. If you go without rest, you will eventually break down. You will eventually lose your mind. And so the rest for the body certainly is commanded here by the Lord, but it's not just for the body. It's also a chance for Israel to remember the great deeds that God has done for them. So when he says, observe the Sabbath day here in verse 12, Back in Exodus 20, he said, remember the Sabbath day, don't forget about it, to keep it holy. The word holy, of course, means that you are maintaining its sanctity, the, the specialness of this particular day that God has commanded us to observe, as the Lord your God commanded you. And notice that very important word, commanded. People, unless they actually sometimes are forced to take time off, they won't, and it's to their detriment. And so this isn't a suggestion from God. You know, it would really be nice if you took a day off now and then. It's, I want you to rest, to rest in me, to rest your souls, to rest your body. And so it would be the Sabbath day, then as, as history proceeded, that they would gather in the synagogue to hear the word of God read. And so again, everybody's included here. Uh, oftentimes in other lands, again, they worked constantly, seven days a week. 
and they were forced into it or they chose to do it, but the fact is they ran, 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 ran themselves to death. And here now is this crazy group of Israelites who are actually taking a day off. And not just them. They're giving a day off to their animals. And not just to the animals, but even to their slaves or to sojourners coming through. Everybody gets a day to rest. It would have been remarkable, probably the envy of the nations around them. And it showed that they were a different people. God's people. And as such, then, it becomes really important as you see things process through history, um, he, he reminds them in verse 15, you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. That one time you were put into forced labor, no rest, no break, no, no let off. And that when the Pharaoh got mad at you, instead of providing the, the straw to make the bricks, he made you go out and find the straw to make the bricks, but you had to keep production up. You could not let the numbers fall. And so they are being told, remember what life was like under slavery. Remember what life was like under that heavy burden. And that the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. In other words, this is pure gospel here that God is their deliverer. He is the one who broke the bonds of slavery for them. He is the one who released them from captivity and has brought them to the place where they are about to enter the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey. And as such then, he says, therefore the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. And down through the ages, of course, the day has shifted that is observed by God's people for the most part to Sunday rather than the Jewish uh, Sabbath, which was on a Saturday. The early church in the first century, and we see it already occurring in the book of Acts, began to worship on Sunday for what reason, do you think? Because they were trying to play games with God's word? No, because Jesus rose on Sunday. It is in Christ that God, the Lord our God, has brought you out of the slavery of sin and death. It is through Christ that God has released us from the burden of sin and guilt. It is through Christ that death itself has been swallowed up in victory and that we possess this victory for ourselves. That to observe the Sabbath is not to be a specific day to refrain from physical labor. In the New Testament sense now, it is all pure grace, even as it was in the Old Testament before it got abused. Uh, the Pharisees had carried it too far, made all kinds of rules and regulations about what you could or couldn't do on the Sabbath day, and they got mad at Jesus and wanted to destroy him because he healed on the Sabbath. Or he allowed his disciples who were hungry to take a little bit of grain out of a grain field so that they could eat it. And he reminded the, the religious leaders, the Sabbath was, not, was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. God gave the Sabbath for our sakes, for our good, for our blessing. And yet too many of us were too thick upstairs to realize that. We think that somehow it's another duty we got to do. It's another thing on our list. It's another burden we got to carry. And yeah, if you're looking at it like that, I can see why people want to do something else instead of go to church, scare quotes. But the reality is that when we gather with God's people, we really understand that the power and the force of, force of the third commandment in New Testament terms are not simply in retiring from work one day a week, resting from our labors one day a week, but it's by the holy activity, the sanctified activity of hearing and learning and proclaiming and obeying his word no matter what day of the week it is. You want to worship on Saturday? Here we are. It's fine. Or on Thursday or Tuesday or Monday or Sunday. It's fine because the word of God sanctifies or blesses or makes holy that day. And we are setting it aside then, even a portion of that day, for the things that truly matter, for the things that actually free us up. Luther makes this comment. He says, at whatever time God's word is taught, preached, heard, read, or pondered, 
There the person, the day, and the work are sanctified by it. This is such good news that it's not all about what we are doing. It's all about what God is doing for us. That as we gather around his word and sacraments, we receive forgiveness of our sins, comfort in our afflictions, uh, hope where life itself seems pretty hopeless. Because again, it all focuses on what the Lord our God has done through his son Jesus Christ to deliver us from the greatest enemies this world would ever have known and to give us life. And so it's important that not only do we find recreation for our bodies periodically, but also that we find rest for our souls. The rest of the story, or if you will, the Sabbath of the story, is that the third commandment is a gift of God out of love for you, that you may draw closer to him and receive rest for your souls in Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep each of your hearts and minds in true faith to life eternal, amen. We continue now with the prayer of the church. In our prayers this evening, we pray for Amanda McCray, who is hospitalized, recovering from recent surgery. We also pray for Roman Diebel, who has come home after a hospitalization, and Shelley Smith, also home after several recent hospitalizations. And we continue to pray for strength and healing for Gene Ruprecht as he receives physical therapy. At the conclusion of our prayers, we continue then with the service of the sacrament. Let us rise for prayer. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, so often we are rushing around madly, uh, if not involved in work, then involved in the pursuit of happiness and entertainment and just ways of shutting our minds down. So often we neglect the most important things in life, especially do we neglect your word. And yet you continue to reach out to us in love, calling us to you, calling us to the forgiveness and life that Christ has won, that as we gather with your fellow redeemed, as we read the Holy Scriptures and ponder them in our daily devotions, there that day is being sanctified by that word, and we are remembering again what great things you have done for us in Christ. And so let us now not see uh, coming to the services of your house as a burden or duty that we must perform, but rather as a wonderful privilege by which we may share in the gifts that you so freely give. We pray, Heavenly Father, again, that you would be with your church throughout the world, that in these dark and latter days, that she would continue to shine brightly, especially in places of persecution or apathy. We pray for our country that has moved so far away from the foundational things, that you would draw us to a true repentance and back once more to that firm foundation of your word. We pray once more that our country could be a shining city upon a hill, instead of a place that is so filled with division and discord. We pray, dear Father in heaven, that you would be with Amanda as she recuperates from her surgery. We are thankful everything went well and pray your blessing upon her that body and soul she would fully and completely recover. We are thankful that Ronan and Shelley are home from their recent hospitalizations. Be with them, O Lord, day by day and uphold them in your mercy. Be with Jean as he undergoes uh, therapy that his legs can be strengthened and once more he can walk in such a way as he can come home again. We commend all for whom we pray uh, into your hands and especially those who are upon our hearts that you would continue to, to make your grace and your mercy shine in the face of Jesus Christ our Lord in whose name we pray, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who, having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Our service continues with the singing of the canticle, and let us rise. Let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.